tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. Sir, said the butler, turning to a sort of malted parlor, that thing was not my master, and there's the truth. My master, here, he looked around and began to whisper, is a tall, fine build of a man. This was more of a dwarf. Utterson attempted to protest. Oh, sir, cried Poole, do you think I do not know my master to 20, after twenty years? Do you think I do not know where his head comes to in the cabinet door, where I saw him every morning of my life? No, sir, that thing in the mask was never Dr. Jekyll. God knows what it was, but it was never Dr. Jekyll. And it is the belief of my heart that there was murder done. Poole, replied the lawyer. If you say that, it will become my duty to make certain. Much as I desire to spare your master's feelings, much as I am puzzled by this note which seems to prove him to still be alive, I shall consider it my duty to break in that door. Ah, Mr. Utterson, that's talking, cried the butler. And now comes the second question, resumed Utterson. Who is going to do it? Why, you and me, sir, was the undaunted reply. That's very well said, returned the lawyer. And whatever comes of it, I shall make it my business to see you are no loser. There's knacks in the theater, continued Poole. And you might take the kitchen poker for yourself. The lawyer took that rude instrument into his hands and balanced it. Do you know, Poole, he said, looking up, that you and I are about to place ourselves in a position of some peril, you may say so, sir, indeed, returned the butler. It is well, then, we should be frank, said the other. We both think more than we have said. Let us make a clean breast. This masked figure that you saw, did you recognize it? Well, sir, it went so quick, and the creature was so doubled up, that I could hardly swear to that, was the answer. But if you mean, was it Mr. Hyde? Why, yes, I think it was. You see, it was much of the same bigness, and it had the same quick, light way with it. And then who else could have gotten in by the laboratory door? You have not forgot, sir, that at the time of the murder he still had the key with him. But that's not all. I don't know, Mr. Utterson, if you've ever met this Mr. Hyde. Yes, said the lawyer. I once spoke with him. Then you must know as well as the rest of us that there was something queer about that gentleman. Something that gave a man a turn. I don't know rightly how to say it, sir, beyond this. That you felt it in your marrow, kind of cold and thin. I own I felt something of what you describe, said Mr. Utterson. Quite so, sir, returned Poole. Well, then, when that masked thing like a monkey jumped from among the chemicals and whipped into the cabinet, it went down my spine like ice. Oh, I know it's not evidence, Mr. Utterson. I'm book-learned enough for that. But a man has his feelings, and I give you my Bible word it was Mr. Hyde. Aye, aye, said the lawyer. My fears inclined to the same point. Evil, I fear. Founded evil was sure to come of that connection. I truly, I believe you. I believe poor Harry is killed, and I believe his murderer, for what purpose God alone can tell, is still lurking in his victim's room. Well, let our name be vengeance. Call Bradshaw. The footman came at the summons, very white and nervous. Put yourself together, Bradshaw, said the lawyer. This suspense, I know, is telling upon all of you, but it is now our intention to make an end of it. Poole here and I are going to force our way into the cabinet. If all is well, my shoulders are broad enough to bear the blame. Meanwhile, lest anything should really be amiss or any malefactor seek to escape by the back. You and the boy must go around the corner with a pair of good sticks and take your post at the laboratory door. We give you ten minutes to get to your stations. As Bradshaw left, the lawyer looked at his watch. And now, Poole, let us get to ours, he said, and taking the poker under his arm led the way into the yard. The scud had banked over the moon, and it was now quite dark. The wind, which only broke in puffs and drafts into that deep well of a building, tossed the light of the candle to and fro about their steps until they came into the shelter of the theater, where they sat down silently to wait. London hummed solemnly all around, but nearer at hand the stillness was only broken by the sounds of a footfall moving to and fro along the cabinet floor. So it will walk all day, sir, whispered Poole. Aye, in the better part of the night. Only when a new sample comes from the chemist there's a bit of a break. 
and it's no conscience that such an enemy to rest. Ah, sir, there's blood foully shed in every step of it. But hark again, a little closer. Put your heart in your ears, Mr. Utterson, and tell me, is that the doctor's foot? The steps fell lightly and oddly with a certain swing, for all they went so slowly. It was different indeed from the heavy creaking tread of Henry Jekyll. Utterson sighed, is there never anything else, he asked. Poole nodded. Once, he said, once I heard it weeping. Weeping? How what? said the lawyer, conscious of a sudden chill of horror. Weeping like a woman or a lost soul, said the butler. I came away with that upon my heart that I could have wept too. But now the ten minutes drew to an end. Poole disinterred the axe from the stack of packing straw. The candle was set upon the nearest table to light the attack, and they drew near, with bated breath to where the patient foot was still going up and down and up and down in the quiet of the night. Jekyll, cried Mr. Utterson with a loud voice. I demand to see you. He paused a moment, but there came no reply. I give you fair warning, our suspicions are aroused, and I must and shall see you. He resumed. If not by fair means, then by foul. If not of your consent, then by brute force. Utterson, said the voice. For God's sakes, have mercy! Ah, that's not Jekyll's voice. It's Hyde's, cried Utterson. Down with the door, pool! Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Night.